In this After Effects tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can take your shadows from this to this. So here in After Effects, I've just got a simple uh, looping background um, that our biker can go into. Uh, and this is just a two second, uh, sorry, a four second loop that's uh, been time remapped and it's got the loop out expression on. So if we go into here, this is where everything is. And as you can see, it's quite a wide comp uh, with four seconds on the timeline. And like I said, this just loops back into the main comp. So if we drop our biker into here and we'll put him, um, put him here. And we'll solo him and make sure it fits in the other comp. So he needs uh, bring it up a little bit. So he's in the center there. And if we unsolo that, <coughs> we can see uh, that he fits quite nicely there. I'm just going to scale him down a little bit. Um, just a little tiny bit and drop him, say, there. Now you'll notice um, this this main comp, and we're not going to get into any of the rigging or animation of the biker in this tutorial. Uh, that'll be a separate one um, if anyone wants to see that. You'll notice this is a 1080 comp scaled up times three. Um, and that's quite important because when we apply the shadows, we can't use continuously rasterize. Uh, so it needs to be quite big from the start so that we still get that detail uh, once we turn off continuously rasterize. Um, and again, this is a four second loop um, on loop out. So this is just gonna loop over and over and over again. And you'll notice uh, I've got a scale um, here as well when he sort of pushes down on the pedal. And the anchor point as well as the uh, actual assets really helps if it's at the bottom of the composition. It doesn't have to be, but it does help. And then that's pre comp so we've got the scale in there and uh, the, obviously the assets as well. So that we can then put the anchor point to the bottom of this and we can scale him uh, from the bottom like, like so. So the first thing we want to do, uh, we want to solo the biker in this case. Uh, it could be a character walking, it could be anything, but in this case it's a biker. And we're also going to solo the road so we can sort of see um, you know what colors we're working with etc and the first thing we want to do is we want to duplicate the main um, you know what we're going to be applying the shadow to so we're going to duplicate it and drag it underneath and we'll call this biker shadow okay once we've done that we need to uncheck the scale and um, so we can scale it on one axis um, and I like to use maybe between minus 10 and minus 20. So we'll try with minus 15 first, which looks fine. And you'll notice even though the anchor point is right at the bottom, sometimes you just need to nudge it up a little bit so that um, these two connect here. Okay. And we're going to add a transform tool. And what this does is you can, it's an effect that you can move it uh, around without actually moving the layer. It's got quite a, quite versatile and quite a few uses for it and we're going to the first thing we're going to change is this skew axis here and we're going to change that to 90 and as you can see nothing's changed yet until we move this skew now you'll notice um it's not continuously rasterized and if it is it doesn't seem to work very well um so i found that just turning off the continuously rasterized works fine this one can be continuously rasterized that's not a problem uh, but the the shadow one uh, not to be and I've found that for shadows, minus 40 works fine. But one thing I have forgot to do, uh, we need to consider where our light source is coming from. So in this case, it's the sun. So obviously uh, we want the, the shadow to be facing this way. So if we go back to the shadow, I found like say minus 40, maybe try minus 60, nah, I'd say minus 50 on that one. Okay, and then we need to drag it back over here like this. And using your arrow keys, depending on obviously how you find, you need to adjust it. Um, you need to put it back into its relevant place so that wherever the tires in this case are touching, uh, needs to touch the tires on the bottom. 
and we can play with the scale again. Uh, so this one's set to minus 15. Let's say minus, try minus 13 maybe. That looks good. Okay. So once we've finished with the transform, we can then collapse that so we don't, that doesn't get in the way anymore. And the second thing I'm going to add is a gradient ramp. Now what a gradient ramp does is basically you can, you can move these to create um, a gradient on your, on your layer. Um, so the start, for some reason the start is here and the end is here. Uh, so for the end color, we need to have a much darker variant of the floor. So I'm going to move that down a little bit. And then the start color needs to be the floor, same color as the floor. And that is how we create, um, so like, so if you can imagine a shadow on a floor, um, it's going to be much darker in the points where, you know, you've got contact from the asset and it's going to slowly uh, fade off. So just play with these numbers um, here. And also you can, you can change the, the opacity there like that. And the, the, obviously the, the closer that one is, um, the more it's going to fade off. So something like that looks quite well. And again, we've finished with that gradient ramp so we can then collapse that. And the next um, effect I'm going to add is a camera lens blur. And I found that something like 15 works quite well with this. Um, so you can see it really starts to blur out. Don't worry about this uh, here at the minute. Um, we're gonna we're gonna add some detail back in there. Gonna nudge that up, um, and this rotation. Sometimes I like to put it to ninety, uh, yeah, ninety degrees. Sometimes it works well. Sometimes it doesn't. Again, it depends because obviously there's there's quite a a small area here where this wheel is touching the floor, but if you was using it like a character, for example. Um, you know the length of this foot here would be would be much obviously larger than that so let's go back into our main comp to see how this is looking it's looking good obviously we've got the sun coming from here casting the shadow down uh, but it's all sort of one color and it's all the same um blurriness like i said these bits here that touch um would tend to be more have more detail in them so the way we can sort of achieve that is if we do we duplicate the shadow on this one, okay? So this one's gonna be uh, much darker as well, um, like that. In fact, I might even delete the gradient ramp off that one. And what we'll, we'll add on this one is, uh, so biker shadow um, detail. And we'll add a fill onto this one instead. So it's just gonna be red. And we'll make it pretty much black like that, okay? And we'll turn the we'll turn the blur down to about maybe three, so so you can see now we've got much finer details. And then what we're going to do, we're going to add a mask over that by double clicking this square up here, rectangle tool, and it's going to add a, a mask over everything. Okay. And then what we can do, if we double click this line here, it's going to bring up um, the transform for the mask, which we can then bring all the way down. Um, I'd usually set it to about there maybe, so you've got a little bit of detail there. And then if we drag it back, I know obviously there's nothing beyond this point, but this will make sense in a second. So if we press F on the keyboard, you get this mask feather. And if we put that to about 200, that'll start to mask out um, maybe 100. So you can see now that the closer the tire is, uh, sorry, closer the shadow is to this tire here, there's more detail and it's also a lot darker. Maybe try 50, does that work? 50 works quite well, but I might just turn the opacity down slightly to about 50. Um, so we'll, again, we'll check how that looks in the main comp. So that's looking good. And I might even, um, duplicate that one more time and we'll call this tiny detail and we'll turn off the camera lens blur completely on that one we'll put the opacity all the way up to 100 and we'll just bring it down even further like that so just touching the bottom of the wheel 
maybe. So if we turn the um, turn these off, we've got the main shadow, um, which is blurred and gradient um, filled. We've then got the details on top, and then one more, we've got even more details. So you see it's very, very, very subtle, but this is a hard line and it's dark. Um, and then obviously we've got the main on top. So if we unsolo all of these, and we go back to how this looks, because obviously these are all duplicates, because obviously these are all duplicates of this comp. So anything that happens in here, so obviously when his, his legs are moving, if we was to turn that shadow on, um, that's also moving as well. Obviously it goes quite blurry. Um, but if you was to go into here and update this, um, any, you know, if you was to put in, let's just say, um, Let's change the fill so we can actually see it. Um, if you was to put in this, for example, I don't know why you do that, but it's just to show that anything that goes in there also gets updated in the shadow. So if you thought that, you know, um, the, the character needed um, a different helmet or um, say it was a walking character and you needed to change the shoes, that would all update in here. Um, So if we go back, so you need, it's down to personal preference and down to obviously what the background color is. Um, but what we could do is we could change these to a multiply, uh, which will really darken it and bring them through. And then obviously we can, we can play around with the, with the opacity. So the main one, if I was to put up say 60, uh, the details at about 20, and then that one at about 50, uh, you can see how you know, you can really start to change it and get um, what's ideal for for your composition. Again, if we go back to the main one with everything in it, um, the sun and this shine here is coming from this direction, which is hitting obviously the bike and it's casting a shadow down there. And this will be the final result. Um, obviously I've graded this, um, added some nice textures and I've also skewed the composition to match um, you know this skewed shadow here um, and you've got a sense of following this bike along uh, a road uh, added some blur and motion blur on this um, on these road markings and I've just added a little bit of a camera wobble as well um, so that is how you create skewed shadows in After Effects and um, if there's anything else from this video you'd like to see a tutorial on uh, please let me know and I'll see if I can get around to doing it